If you've read any watch blogs or follow watch channels, chances are you've come into contact with the Orion Bambino. This humble mechanical dress watch from Japan has grown to become a gatekeeper and standard of value, organically creating a cult-like following over the past decade. But in 2021, is it still the value proposition that it once was? Let's jump into it. So for this video, we have a Gen 2 version 2 variant that will serve as our point of reference. The Bambino personally has always been a watch that I've admired for being a gateway for myself and others into watch collecting. Its value is hard to question, but let's first take a step back and understand its origins. The Orient Watch Company was officially born in 1950, though it has some roots dating back to a humble watch and clock wholesale shop founded in 1901 in Tokyo, Japan. In a more modern context, Orient operates under the umbrella of the Seiko Epson Corporation, though it's important to note that Orient as a business is operated completely independently from Seiko. Over the past couple of decades, Orient has become an especially prominent player in the affordable space and a major element of the Japanese watchmaking market, known for watches with impressively spec calibers and a high level of finishing for the price. Released around 10 years ago, the Bambino Collection is in large part responsible for Orient's current status and reputation, having built upon a passionate following among the internet watch community as watch forums grew over the past decade. It's also important to note that Orient itself no longer calls the watch the Bambino for legal reasons, though I don't think enthusiasts will ever call it anything else. Despite the mass market appeal with the design and pricing, seeing a Bambino out in the wild remains pretty definitive evidence of a watch nerd. Today, the broad range of Bambino models is truly impressive, spanning five generations, which are essentially model families, as well as numerous versions or individual references within each generation. There are also small seconds Bambinos, a 36 millimeter variant, and finally a collection of open heart variants. But one of the first versions that helped pave the way for its current reputation was the Gen 2 version 2. One of my all-time favorite Bambinos, characterized by the standard 40 and half millimeter case and Roman numeral markers on the dial. So before we get into this video, we are an authorized dealer of Orient. Keeping Bambinos in stock is another conversation though, so definitely check out the entire collection of Orient on our site. In addition to that though, we also have two helpful buying guides. If you're looking in this general range of just products under $1,000 or so, we have one looking at the best automatics under 500, as well as looking at some of the best watches under $1,000. Check out both of those down in the description below. When it comes to the wearing experience of the Bambino, it has maintained its stature and has been unchanged for quite some time. It's 40 and a half millimeter case diameter and 46.6 millimeter lug to lug measurement means this watch is actually towards the larger end of sizing in terms of my preferred dress watch dimensions, which has long been a point of contention among collectors who are oriented to more vintage appeal. Given the narrow bezel, the dial inhabits up a greater portion of the visual real estate, helping this watch to wear true to its diameter, but is fortunately combined with a restrained lug to lug to make it still more than wearable. Measuring from the case back to the top of the prominent dome mineral crystal, the Bambino still only comes in at 11 and a half millimeters in thickness, sliding under cuffs with great ease. This is especially impressive given the limitations of many Miyota and Seiko counterpart movements that have dimensions that make achieving this relative compact form factor difficult. Another quirk of this Bambino generation is the 21 millimeter lug width that has always been a point of criticism. While the included alligator grain strap is adequate for a $150 watch, that reduction in third-party options as a result of the odd width is a reality to be aware of. One thing that I have come to recognize though with odd numbered lug widths is sizing up to the closest even number can sometimes work for more supple leather. Zeroing in on case finishing, the Bambino features a highly polished case top, bezel, push-pull crown, and screw down case back combined with neatly brushed case sides. The case architecture is relatively simple, but still really well done for the price, especially when it comes to the eye catching bezel, which slopes away from the dome crystal in a step slightly. For water resistance, the Bambino wouldn't be described as aquatic, with the watch only being rated for 30 meters. However, the Bambino isn't one that evokes feelings of dipping into the pool with its look, so never was going to be an issue for me. Overall, it would be fair to call this case presentation 
dedication in finishing class leading for a $150 dress watch. Sure, it's not a world beater by any means, but there's a reason why so many people love the Bambino. And the case finishing, as well as the dial finish below, are two reasons why. As mentioned, there are a number of Bambino dial configurations out there, from the simpler applied triangular indices on the Gen 1 version 1 to the classic printed Arabic numerals with the Gen 5, there's almost certainly a dial layout that will appeal to virtually any enthusiast among the broad Bambino offering. Although the Gen 2 version 2 has always had a soft spot of being the first Bambino that I personally owned. It combines the watch's refined undertones with applied and polished Roman numerals set over a matte white dial surface. At the outskirts, the dial is neatly printed in black with a set of concentric circles with the outer circle exhibiting simple minute markings and the inner equipped with numerals denoting the five minute position. At the center, blued hands, not going to be heat treated, manage time telling duties, and a simple step aperture enables a view of the traditional date wheel. The dial makes powerful use of the negative space with only the applied orient signature at noon and water resistance in the elevated cursive text at six. Since this is a dress watch, there is no presence of loom on this piece, but considering this is going to be pretty much your run of the mill dress orientation, I don't see any problem there. Same thing with water resistance. However, the most impressive feat of the bamboo is not with what is on outward display, but with the brand's manufactured automatic movements. In this case, with the F6724. Like Seiko, Orient is on a short list of Japanese watchmakers with a totally vertically integrated manufacturing system, meaning the brand controls essentially all of the aspects of production. One result of this level of vertical integration is Orient's ability to produce in-house mechanical watch movements with substantial volumes and doing it at very competitive prices. This F6724 is a frequent inhabitant within Orient's entry-level offerings, being a straightforward automatic movement with 22 joules, operating at 21,600 vibrations per hour, three hertz, features hacking and hand winding, hacking stopping the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position, and a power reserve of 40 hours. Despite a quoted accuracy of minus 15 to plus 25 seconds a day, Orient calibers, in my experience, tend to outperform that standard in many other similar price movements under $300. Now, this particular example we are showcasing backs up this idea with it keeping around two to three seconds off from perfect time a day. Now, again, this is not close to the norm, but the fact that any models are outputting this level of accuracy at this price range, it's just honestly unfair. And now that we have handled the general aspects of the Bambino, we can dig into the conversation on what exactly is being offered here and does it really still stand up in 2021? If you want the short answer, the answer is going to be yes. And for those that are getting ready to say something about, hey, I wasted all your time watching this entire video, well, let's talk a little bit more about the Bambino because there are some things, of course, to consider. Now, this is a common just exercise of if it's not broke, don't fix it. That is the Bambino essentially over the past decade. It's been working for so much time, what really more could you do for a hundred to $150 watch? But that all considered though, there are certainly things the Bambino could do to improve. Now, I think the most obvious thing is just going to be instead of the variations in terms of dials, how can we start seeing more variations when it comes to actual productions of cases and different sizing options? That's something that I believe many enthusiasts would love to see. Now, we have seen the 36 millimeter option, but it seems like stock availability of those have been a bit difficult to come by. So even seeing something that would split the difference, I think would be greatly appreciated by many people out there. 40 and a half millimeters on any standard is a watch that's going to be in the medium size range. But when you factor in that this is trying to be more of a traditional dress piece, that actually starts to go into the larger end of things. But still, there's enough going for the Bambino where I think many people were able to overlook that idea. But still, this is something to consider. Also the lovely 21 millimeter lug width. So many people invest heavily into 20 millimeter straps 22 millimeter straps. So to see something that's kind of splitting the difference is a bit unfortunate. And seeing what's happening with pretty much every other Orient model, it's going to have more of an even number lug width. It is difficult to understand maybe outside of some design proportions, why they would opt for this route, considering that this is their best selling model and knowing the type of buyer that's going to go towards it is going to care about that idea. But the truth is when it comes to the Bambino, it has become a watch that really sets the standard for that 100 to $200 range. 
If you're looking for your first mechanical watch, the Bambino still makes just as much sense today in a lot of ways than it did in the past. I am interested to see in almost a little bit, honestly, it's just difficult for me to understand why Orient isn't putting more focus on these watches when it comes to new designs as well as production because it's been very slow to roll uh, in terms of just getting availability of these pieces. I know for the most part they are available out there, but it just seems like these kind of come and go and it's a bit more spotty and you probably wouldn't want that for your number one selling line. At least that's what I would assume is going to be the case with the Bambino. And being a watch that really resembles that entry door that this brand, Orient, has almost just identified themselves with. And also just to speak a little bit, just kind of from a more romantic view of this watch, I'm always going to love the Bambino. It's a watch that has always just been something that I've held dear to my heart, just considering it was one of the gateway watches for myself and so many other people, and being the first watch to ever appear on this channel. It's hard for me not to still recommend the Orient Bambino, perhaps still one of the best entry-level watches on the entire market. But all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Also, have you ever purchased a Bambino? Please leave a comment down below about which one you purchased and kind of what's your backstory with it. What do you still think of the piece? Do you still wear it? Was it a gateway watch for you, or is it something that's still kind of a daily wearer in your collection? Leave a comment down below. Also, definitely check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. Also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer as well. In addition, if you want to stay up to date with the content, be sure to follow along on Instagram. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.